Om Gyanati Manandasya Gyanandana Sadakaya Chakshur Nidhamina Tasmai Shri Guru Vedana Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nidhananda Shri Adhari Jagadana Shri Vasudhi Gora Tarina Hare Krishna single living entity knowing knowing exactly the predicament of that living entity Krishna somehow or other uh, makes some arrangement for that living being to make advancement whether it is a crumb of prasadam for an end or whether it is the Bhagavad Gita in the hands of a human being it is all the arrangement of the Supreme Lord. Whether it is chastisement, whether it is being limited, puna musikabhav, whether it is being turned into a mouse again after one has been a tiger. Uh, whatever it is, the Supreme Lord makes arrangements for our purification. Then, that Lord who sends mercy in so many forms uh, only to most fortunate souls will send his pure and spotless mercy uh, in the form of his holy name which is Krishna himself or in the form of Srimad Bhagavatam, which is known as the literary incarnation of Krishna. So in that way, when one receives that mercy, then the quality of that mercy is, has now reached the stage of perfection. Why Krishna gives such mercy? Uh, that is ultimately causeless, uh, because even when we have done all kinds of pious activity, it's not enough. It's not enough to earn such a gift. Um, not whatever we may have done, whether we have prayed in previous lives on our knees as good Christians, or bowed down five times a day as good Muslims doing our namas, or whether we were yogis with long beards, or whatever we were, right? Whatever we did, all those austerities, all the dedication, it was not enough to receive this mercy. Why we have received? Causeless. Nothing we have done, nothing we have done has warranted it. Um, the other day, uh, at the beginning of this Kirtan Mela, Sachinandan Maharaj also asked me, to speak unexpectedly um, and he sort of on the, on the spot says and now Kadama Kamaraj will also say something and then I had my mind was there was nothing in my mind uh, sometimes there's really nothing. <laughs> I don't know if you have that also, these moments that there's absolutely nothing. So there was nothing. So anyway, don't worry about it. Something will come. <laughs> but what it was, I had no idea. I sat down and still nothing. Right? Nothing. Until I started to speak, only then something came. And 
what came was that Srimad Bhagavatam is the is, is the purport to the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And I addressed that very short because it was only like uh, a warm up for the uh, Kirtan Mela and part of the Adiva. So, uh, whereas that is actually a big topic and one could easily make it into a one week seminar by proving it with various verses and leading up to it. Um, even one week would not suffice. And now, also, up to nine o'clock, I won't be able to deal with that. But I was thinking about a few things. And one thing that always sort of struck me uh, is that Krishna, uh, at the end, or at the end of the Srimad Bhagavatam, the final verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, is, is basically pointing towards the chanting of the Holy Name. Uh, before the last verse, it identifies the Bhagavatam as the Amala Purana, the spotless Purana, and glorifies Bhagavatam as the means by which we can uh, become completely liberated. And then it says in the final verse of Bhagavatam, Nama Sankirtanam Yasya Sarva Papa Pranasanam Pranamo Dukasananas Tam Namani Harim Param. I offer my respectful obeisance to the Supreme Lord Hari, the congregation of Jen, of whose holy names destroys all sinful reactions. Uh, and the offering of obeisances unto whom relieves all material suffering. I think it could also be translated that by this offering of, of the chanting of the Holy Name, we are, we are offering obeisances to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is our way of glorifying Him and bowing before Him. So anyway, the conclusion of the Bhagavatam is actually the chanting of Hare Krishna, the Sankirtan Yagya. Of course, it is mentioned several times, like in this verse, um, and the result of chanting is, is mentioned. It is also said, Kalota Hare Kirtana, in this age of Kali, the process is chanting of Hare Krishna, and so on. Many times it is mentioned. But I find it interesting and important that the conclusion of the Bhagavatam is, is pointing Sankirtan. That's the last word. And that's, that's important. The last word is, is important. So that's to be noted. Now, as I began my talk uh, just now, I was speaking about the special mercy that comes into the life of all living beings. And uh, I'm basically in this lecture thinking of three things. And the three things I'm thinking of is obviously the chanting of Hare Krishna as a way to get that mercy of the Lord or the Srimad Bhagavatam, which prepares us. Uh, Srimad Bhagavatam is the, it's a first canto and second canto are like the lotus feet of the Lord, and then we go up to the tenth canto, to the face of the Lord. Or all these cantos prepare us for that direct darshan of the Lord, which we get in the tenth canto. Uh, which also is there in the Holy Name. So you can say all these cantos also prepare us to chant Hare Krishna. So that's two points. And the third point is life itself. The lessons we learn through life itself. So many things happen. And every living being is learning through life itself. And we are learning through life itself. And then the Holy Name accompanies us. And as we are learning through life, our whole experience also changes. So on these three things I wanted to say something. And now I'll begin with life itself. And um, I read in a book of C.S. Lewis an interesting metaphor which I liked very much. And it was in that metaphor he was describing life as a house. And basically the Supreme Lord he is renovating that house and he's fixing it. And you know, there are the obvious things, huh? the leaks in the roof where all these sinful 
desires are coming in, lust, greed, anger, all these things. He's fixing the holes. That's logical. But lately, lately, what's he doing? Lately, he's just, he's breaking the whole house. I mean, he's like just breaking the whole house. He's no longer fixing my life. He's just destroying my life. What on earth is he doing? It turns out that the Supreme Lord is not interested in just fixing the house, you know, and making it as it was and making it nice. No, he's changing the whole thing. He is not just rebuilding the house, he's making it into a palace. And he plans to live in it himself. <laughs> ah, it was really, it was good. You know, when I read it, I was thinking, wow. Impressive, I mean, serious thought because so true, uh, so true. Krishna, Krishna plans to use us for his purposes. He's not just helping us to live our life better. Uh, that's not the idea. He will fix our life and take away a few sinful activities and so on and chant Hare Krishna and just be happy devotees and live nice life and everything. My life is a very, very nice life. You know, even my cat takes prasada. He's upsetting the whole thing. He's pulling the rug from under us, our whole life. He's changing because he wants to use us as his instrument. So that's what I wanted to say about life. Right? Then about the Bhagavatam, which was my second topic. About the Bhagavatam, yes, I, be I began with the end of the Bhagavatam. I began with the final verse of Bhagavatam pointing at Sankirtan. And then, uh, the first three verses of Bhagavatam are, are kind of the introduction to Bhagavatam. Uh, it describes that Krishna is the origin of everything that is that we see here in this world. Behind everything is Krishna. And yet, he's independent, aloof of it all. It is said that Krishna is the direct cause of the spiritual world and the indirect cause of the material world. What does that mean? It means that the spiritual world he wanted, the material world he didn't want it. We wanted it. And then what could Krishna do? All right, then. You have it. If you really want it. You really want it? Yes, yes, yes. All right, take it. Indirect cause. Jamalias yayatun vayatitavatis chattis vayatisvara. Directly indirect. Then Dharma Projita Kaidavun Traparamon in Matsvarana Satam Krishna points out what is real in spiritual life and what is not. Uh, he points out the cheating religion and points out um, the karma kanda, jnana kanda, keva bisra bandha, this this path of karma and jnana, of sense enjoyment or of like of speculative uh, thinking and trying to Escape from material life for liberation is simply a cheating process, only devotional service. Then he classifies devotional service. Nigamakalpatara Galipam Vadam. He's explaining this is the essence of all the Vedas. And then he says that Muhur Aura Sikha this is the this is the ecstasy. Here one can taste great ecstasy. So in this way he classifies, but not much further. Uh, in the in the first chapter he already says, "Prayena the sabi kalvis Everyone affected by kalyuga, mandu sumandamatiro Everyone fallen, everyone weak, everyone corrupted. Nobody is pure. Our Tamal Krishna Maharaji wrote an interesting article which I noted in his Hare Krishna at SMU when he was an undergraduate study, uh, student. And what he wrote was that he wrote about Luther. 
And what he wrote was that Luther was a Catholic monk who saw corruption. He saw the teachings, but he saw nobody can follow the teachings. Well, that sounds familiar, <laughs> you know. I mean, he saw there, there are, sometimes they say about this God, uh, it is the movement where they have the highest teachings and where there is the greatest gap between what is followed and what is taught. Whether it's true, I don't know, but I have heard it. Uh, anyway, so Tamal Krishnamaris was describing that Luther saw corruption in the church. And he, he rebelled against it and exposed it and distanciated himself from Rome in that way. But then what happened, is what we don't hear very often, is that Luther himself had difficulties. And although he was an ordained monk, somehow or other he fell in love. And he gave up his, his uh, position as a monk. And he married a nun. And then he realized, everybody is corrupted. Even I am corrupted. And then he developed his philosophy of grace. That was a very interesting article. I mean, really appreciated it. Um, to see how that philosophy of grace, you know, where the grace of the Lord is needed because we are through and through corrupt. Um, of course, that has been taken cheaply. And that's where the, the old Jesus died for our sins and therefore now we can do any damn thing came from. Um, Bhagavatam is not like that. Um, Bhagavatam points out, yes, there is the mercy of the Lord, and that mercy is brought to us, but now 